um, talking about that, one example that comes to my mind um, is that we were tasked to um, with one of our pharmaceutical clients, and they were coming up with a new drug in the marketplace for um, kids that were diagnosed with ADHD. Right, it's a very, very you know hot topic and you know really controversial. So um, we uh, we were tasked to understand if there's like a real interest, what would drive this interest. So, uh, and our hypothesis was knowing from like, you know, pharmaceutical research, like in general, like more knowledgeable patient or caregiver in this case is about a drug and the condition more likely that they are, or like, not maybe not more likely, but their intention to use the, you know, medicine for this, you know, condition is related, right? We know those two things are related, but we don't know what's causing what, right? So, um, so we had the hypotheses, like, you know, we were, we were out there trying to figure this out. So we talked to, we create a questionnaire and we use it CMI, like, you know, lots of quantitative research in addition to qualitative research. So we did talk to caregivers about, you know, like, you know, their information seeking behavior, their, you know, how they feel about this condition, how they feel about their child, how they feel about medication in general. So once we started building the model, you know, we took the observed data, we measured it, and then we could not find the relationship between knowledge and, and you know, interest in using a drug, right? Until we went one step further back, one step, step prior to it, which was information seeking behavior. Luckily, we had enough sample size. I mean, we cut the data into two groups. Where you get your information was so critical and it was causing you both in either case. So I'll give you an example. So one group was, you know, getting their information from top medical resources, their healthcare provider or WebMD, things like that. And there was a clearly other group, their top three information sources were like mommy blogs against, you know, using drugs for your, you know, young kid or just, you know, different alternative medicine websites. In either case, caregivers were feeling more knowledgeable but it was causing, in one case, it was causing optimism. In the other case, like, you know, create like a negativity around the drug. And then once we were able to split the group, we found the cause, like information seeking behavior to knowledge, and then how they related. In one case, there was a strong positive relationship that is just, you know, affecting a drug usage versus, you know, negative way. So once you build this, then we were able to give like a blueprint to our client, right? So it's just, here's like how people make a decision and you know, what's impacting it, what's causing it. So finding a real trigger, understanding what drives that usage is very important when you're creating a strategy. And I know our client created messaging strategy for their caregivers differently, right? Based on where they go. So, um, and I think it's very applicable right now as we talk about this strange time with COVID and vaccination. And I see this over and over again, where you get your information, how you feel about something. And it's, you know, it's very important. So I think like that example just always come to my mind was like one of the surprising things that we have found. Mm -hmm.